Alright, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today is Brawl's Day, so we're going to be celebrating that with a little bit of a coin flip commander. This is a bit of a meme. You see it occasionally on the ladder, but it is not a particularly good deck, I will preface that right out the gate. Do not craft this if you are trying to win. We're going to be playing around with Krenko Tin Street Kingpin. Three mana, one, two. When Krenko Tin Street Kingpin attacks, put a one, one counter on it. Then create a number of one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to Krenko's power. So the reason why I would not recommend crafting this commander is because it basically lends itself to an all-in kind of... Um, archetype. We're really building entirely around Krenko Tin Street Kingpin, which has its upsides. It means that the deck is very focused and does what it wants to do reasonably consistently. The downside is that it folds to any kind of interaction, so our opponent with any removal spells will really ruin our day because we are not in the colours of protection, unfortunately. We can make a big creature with Krenko, so we can, uh, we can get through our opponent's blockers and uh, stop fight spells and things like that and certain burn spells from happening uh, but if it's just hard destroy target creature we're just not going to win that matchup so that actually means that a lot of scenarios are going to be basically unwinnable for us but we're here to play some brawl and we're here to have some fun and Krenko sure as hell is a fun commander when he gets to do his thing so what do we want to be doing with Krenko is we want to be uh, gaining additional power and trying to make as many goblins as possible essentially so we got lots and lots of pump spells and also a lot of ways to enable haste so that we can get Krenko going as soon as possible because we really don't want to be wasting any kind of time as late as turn four we want to be attacking with Krenko and we want to be attacking through our opponent's blockers we do have some alternative ways of winning the game but they're really unreliable so I wouldn't I wouldn't rely on winning outside of Krenko most of the time, but if you're really close to uh, victory, we have some alternatives that can get you there. But anyway, as I mentioned, we've got lots of pump spells and we've got lots of haste spells. Most of them you'll find in the one drop slot, Torch Courier, Sacrifices to Gain Haste. This is probably the best way uh, for a turn three Krenko, since you can actually get this down on turn one or turn two, and then sacrifice it on turn three to swing in with your Krenko. We've got Barge in as our pump spell, as long with uh, High Titan Reflexes, which puts a first strike counter on Krenko. Really useful because we have the Ozolith here, um, which keeps counters um, past our creatures dying, essentially. Infuriate and Samet Sprint both give uh, some pump spells. Samet Sprint gives haste. You see a little bit of a theme here. We've got a little bit of um, value in the goblins that we make because they're one ones we've got cavalcade of calamity in here whenever a creature you control with power one or less attacks cavalcade of calamity deals one damage to that player or planeswalker that creature is attacking so we've got that and we've also got a little bit of a sacrifice effect as well with weaponize the monsters a fair bit of our removal is sacrifice based as well uh we've got red cap melee to deal four damage to a creature or planeswalker because we want to be dealing with the big creatures so that krenko can swing through really do not want our opponent playing six sixes and things like that we will just just lose so uh, red cap melee deals four damage downside is if it's not a red permanent we do have to sacrifice a land but we're very low to the ground so that shouldn't matter too much we do have heart fire as an additional cost to cast a spell sacrifice a creature so the goblins we're making off of krenko we can sacrifice them so it's basically no real downside to having this in four damage to any target to clean up the game but yes, it's a lot of pump spells, it's a lot of haste spells, and then when you get to like the three drop and higher slots, it's really about finishing the game and a little bit of utility here and there. We do have Bone Crusher Giant, which is effectively a two mana spell. The Stomp to deal two damage to any target is really good at killing early mana dorks. If we're up against ramp decks, we want to be killing those dorks to slow them down, as well as things like Slaying Fire and Skewer the Critics. Do pretty much the same thing. Flame spill from Ikoria, four damage to a creature. Excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. Uh, finishing it off with a good old Ember Cleave. I'm sure most of you know what this one does. Plus one, plus one, double strike and trample. We do have a few pieces of equipment in here because they just go really well with Krenko. Because um, they add that additional power and we also just get to grow a big boy so equipping uh, certain things onto Krenko can be really useful we've got shadow spear to give trample lifelink and plus one plus one so we can push through our opponent's creatures gain life so that we don't have to care about uh, our opponent swinging back at us and the extra plus one plus one makes those creatures 
I have some alternatives with Chandra Fire Artisan, as I mentioned, alternative win cons. The minus seven to exile seven cards and the uh, passive there to deal damage are really good at closing out the game, as is Chandra, Cavalier of Flames, and Torbrand to give all red sources an additional plus two damage. Really good with uh, our goblins because they're effectively three threes at that stage. Not three ones, I guess. Um, yeah, three ones. Uh, so yeah, that's essentially the deck. That's all I'm really going to go into with this one. If you do enjoy the deck, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Brawl content in the future. There will be a link down below for my Ether Hub if you do choose to actually craft this deck. There's a download link in that link. I ask that you follow my Ether Hub because that would be really, really helpful. But uh, it's only if you've got Ether Hub accounts. Don't really care otherwise. But yeah, really appreciate that. Like and subscribe, all that jazz. And see you in the gameplay. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Okay, we're in, and let's have a look at this hand, shall we? It's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it. I don't know if it's great, though. We're up against Galia of the Endless Dance, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two with haste. Other satyrs you control get plus 1, plus 1, and have haste. And whenever you attack with 3 or more creatures, discard a card at random if you do draw 2 cards. So... The reason why I'm keeping this hand is mostly because I'm expecting our opponent to play equally on curve. Uh, which means that they're probably not going to leave up a mana for Krenko. Ooh, Wicked Wolf. Very nice. So yeah, we're going to go Robber of the Rich. Um, getting that early gameplay just means that we get that extra value from Robber. Which is fantastic. And here comes Galia. And they swing for four. So it's whether or not we think our opponent will immediately have an answer for Krenko right here. I could actually go for a Flame Spill and kill Galia. It's a possibility. I really don't like the fact that I can't Ozolith and then play something else. Uh, I suppose we could do a swing first. See what we get. It was a land. Okay. Yeah, so do I want to actually kill Galia here, or do I just want to play Krenko? If I play Krenko and Krenko lives, I probably win. Um, but if he dies, it's a whole different thing. I don't actually have a way to give him haste, is the problem. I'm just going to go for it. YOLO, as the kids would say. He's dead, isn't he? He's dead. Just just kill him. <laughs> just, just get it over with. He's dead. Fervent Champion, okay. Torch... Oh, he's not dead! Ah. Alright, well, they discard a card and draw two. So they want to race, you say. They did discard uh, Giant Growth, which I'm assuming is what they wanted to use there. So I'm going to take this block, assuming that that was the pump spell that they got unlucky enough to discard at random, and it seems that it entirely was the case. Alright. So I'm going to go target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 on Krenko. I'm going to say target creature gets plus 1 plus 0 on first strike. I'm going to play the Ozolith. And then we're going to swing and we're going to make 5 goblins. Also steal a card, which turns out to be Ginger Brute. Alright, so now we've got a superior blocking state. We get to put the counters on the Ozolith if Krenko does end up dying. And bring him back with a uh, first strike and a plus one plus one counter, which is a nice place to be. And discard Ember Cleave at, at random. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, you know that is exactly the card they were swinging for. <laughs> Six mana, right? You just do simple math to know that this is exactly what they were planning. Six mana, cost reduction on every attacking creature, so four. So it's two mana total, two red mana to pay for the Ember Cleave. That is absurd. 
Absurd. Oh my god. Oh, Galia. You didn't want to win this game, did you? <laughs> oh no. Yeah, the fact that the moment he went into the bin, they just exploded. That's that's made my day. That has honestly made my day. Nothing could go wrong from this point forward. Okay then, we're in, and let's have a look-see. I do quite like this hand just off of Bone Crusher alone. Uh, we do have some interaction for our opponent. Not a great deal. I would like a third land and a haste enabler for Krenko, but honestly, that's really about it. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep this one. So, it looks pretty good. So, our opponent's going to be playing Kiora, Behemoth, Beckoner, a three mana, seven loyalty planeswalker. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card, and then you may use the minus one loyalty ability to untap a permanent. So our opponent's going to be playing Mana Dorks, which is why I kept this Bone Crusher Giant, in case we have like a turn one Gilded Goose. Really want to murder that as soon as possible. Going to go with Once Upon a Time, okay. Yeah, so our opponent's deck is really about ramping quite exceptionally. And that's what they're going to do with the Incubation Druid next turn. They're going to go Land Druid, and I'm going to kill it. Um, what they really want is some sort of um, permanent that produces more than one mana, essentially, so that Kiora gets to untap it. Uh, from my perspective of using Kiora decks, there isn't a great deal of interaction in there. Uh, so I shouldn't really expect anything more than a fight spell. They really just want to try and overwhelm you with big powerful creatures, to be honest, so I'm expecting that to be essentially what happens here. So, I mean, if they've got anything, it's probably like Brazen Borrower. But I don't really expect to fight. And I can pretty much... Ooh, okay, so it looks like it is Brazen Borrower. I'm just going to play the land, going to swing. I'm I'm not actually going to pump Krenko. I'm going to save my pumps for when I need to actually power my way through uh, what my opponent's doing. Specifically because I could have it blown out by a Brazen Borrower, which looks like what they've got. All right. So the attack trigger still goes on the stack. And we pass the turn. We've got so many goblins coming out next turn. So we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine goblins coming out. And there's probably not too much they can do about that. At this point, I could even protect my Krenko from most fight spells as well. So here's Kiora. Gives access to two mana. I am going to send all my damage at Krenko, uh, Kiora, I think. Uh, since everything else can kind of... Get the job done. Alright, so Infuriate, Krenko. Four. Uh, yeah, we're going to overkill Kiora, unfortunately, but that's not a, a bad spot to be in, I suppose. Uh, I do want to get, like, a control thing, because this only does attacking creatures. So we want to go to combat... Actually, I don't need to overkill, because uh, that's exactly 7 on the attack trigger. Never mind, we'll save the barge in for later. There we go. So, um, short of them having a uh, stern dismissal, don't really expect much of a blowout there. Uh, we might as well play this Rimrock Knight as well. And then pass the turn. So, Barjin is going to give Trample to all of my creatures, not that that particularly matters, uh, but a plus two, plus two for Krenko gives us another uh, two goblins. And our opponent's probably just going to play Kiora next turn and have it die. They're really too far behind now for any of this to make big difference. I guess they could have um, a wolf fight with Krenko. The food wolf. That's his intervention, digging for an answer. Not sure what they could find. It's just going to be a land drop. I think they're just too far behind now, though. So, no real reason to play much more else out that would... Um, put any downside on us. So, let's just 
Play our Phoenix because it has haste. Swing on in. Put our opponent to eight. And this should be dead next turn. I can't see a, an actual reality where they don't lose here. I guess they could have Flood of Tears. Yeah. That would do something. But to be honest, like, I'm still... I'm going to win. Uh, so we can go... Uh, we've lost our haste, unfortunately. Do we go Krenko Phoenix? Let's see if we've... Have we got lethal? This is two. It's four if I do the pump. We've got four here. I don't think I can get lethal. I can get pretty damn close, though. So I'm going to use the Slaying Fire now, just in case they're running counter magic, because we have actually seen Thassa's intervention. So let's get that Phoenix of Ash doing its thing. Uh, exile three other cards. So I could play one card to, egg, um, to escape here, so... You know, Perforos' intervention, X zero, if I wanted to, even though this, this actually does have a haste uh, trample creature on it. A 5-1 trample. Should get the job done just fine. Vivian to make a reach creature. Not going to make a difference though because we have trample. And we have trample. Legion war boss. Okay. So yeah, we just, uh, we just get in with the Phoenix of Ash and the barge in I think. Send it. Opponent blocks. Plus two, plus two, and trample. That's one point, and then activate for the rest. Fantastic. Yeah, if you don't interact with Krenko, you are going to lose. That is the moral of today's video, is no interaction means defeat. Any kind of interaction, though, and we're probably going to fold pretty hard, <laughs> admittedly. If it's like heavy control, Krenko doesn't stand much of a chance because obviously red doesn't have access to like dive down based effects. No hex proof, no nothing like that. Um, but yeah, bit of an unfortunate situation, but it's a good place to be. Next game. All right, we're in and ooh. Got Footfall Crater, which is kind of nice. That means turn four, Hasty Krenko. We got First Strike Counters. A little bit of removal. It's not the best hand in the world, but we're going to keep this one. We're up against Brokos, Apex of Forever 2, and Sultai Colors for a big boy. We're going to... Actually, no, we're not going to uh, cast this. We're going to cycle it because we've got the Maximize Velocity, which does effectively the same thing. This one we can actually uh, get some card draw off of, so that's what we're going to do. Anyway, uh, Sultai 6-6 six, six with Trample. It does have Mutate as well. That kind of needs to die, to be honest. If we could find an answer for that, that'd be grand. We did not. Okay, pass the turn. Um, mutate with 2 and Sultai Colors. You may cast Brokos Apex of Forever from your graveyard using its Mutate ability. So basically, any non-human at any point during the game, can be a 6-6 six, six Trampler. It's pretty grim, to be honest. As is uh, good old Prankle. So opponent's gonna get in, and we'll see what they want to do with the triggers. I doubt they want to go with Sacrifice a Creature. Discard a card. Okay, we're gonna get rid of... I do need the land. Uh, it might be light up the stage, because this hand is pretty much gas once we get there. Yeah, let's go with light up the stage, I think. Opponent dumps a Buglerat. And we play a land. We're looking for another land drop for the turn. Before we play our Krenko. Could go with a Flame Spill on Prankle. Alternatively, we do have Legion War Boss, which gets in for some points of damage. The sacrifice doesn't really work, because we've got that token that we can sacrifice. So they have to use a kill spell, then the sacrifice on Prankle. Is it worth even bothering with that kind of thing? The issue is that next turn, if they make a land drop, they've got this 6-6. Six, six. So I really kind of want to get rid of Incubation Druid as well. Such a tough spot to be in. Ugh. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think I just have to keep Brokos away. Let's go Flame Spill on the Incubation Druid. So two to the creature, two to my opponent. I think we're going to be too slow, though. So they did have the land, so we have dodged a 6-6 six, six Trampler that Krenko could not attack through. Discard a card. Okay, we're going to get rid of... Probably Robber of the Rich. Ooh, baby. Alright, so dodge some removal. One time. Or dodge a counter spell as well. Try give haste and plus one plus one. If they have an answer, we lose. And we lose. Alright, on to the next game. Alrighty then, we're in, and this hand looks pretty solid, to be honest. We've got the turn one courier, which gives haste to a creature, which is going to be our turn three Krenko. We've got Shadow Spear to give it life, link, and trample. Anax to give it a little bit of board white protection. Not that that's going to be an issue against our opponent's commander, but this is absolutely a snap keep in my eyes. So land, torch courier, attack for one, and then we'll get on to what our opponent's playing. A commander I have not played yet myself, maybe I should. Three mana. Oh, never mind. Let's uh, first play Shadow Spear and attack for one. These turns are going way too quick for me to read my opponent's commander. All right. Three mana for a 2-2 two -two with Constellation. It's Utropia the Twice Favored. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature. That creature gains flying until the end of the turn. So our opponent has a Nessian Wanderer in play. That gives Constellation, and you can get yourself some tasty land drops with that. Uh, Ozolith's really good. So I think we're going with the Krenko and getting that started early. The earlier we do Krenko, the better. So Sacrifice to give haste to Krenko. We're not going to be able to push through the Nessian Wanderer, but it's more about getting the counters on than anything else. So yeah, they'll take the free block there. So our opponent's going to be playing lots of... I'm assuming it's like a Boggles list, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure where I'd want to play this if I did. It's not the most powerful commander in the world. Obviously, all it does is put counters on things and give them flying. It's nothing too crazy. Alright, so this says... Leaves the battlefield. So that's something we want to do. So we're going to make our land drop. We are going to play the Ozolith. So if our opponent does have bounce magic... Uh, we get to keep that plus one, plus one counter that's on Krenko right now. So that's pretty nice. I don't think I'm going to equip with Shadow Spear. Because if they do have a Brazen Borrower, which I feel that they do. Minus two, minus O, and loses all abilities. That's pretty mean. It's just an O3 now. Huh. Interesting. Uh, what do we do with that knowledge? I think we have to flame spill our own creature, don't we? That feels so bad. That is so bad. Um, yeah, it's got to be flame spill our own creature, I think. And then hope for a land drop. Ugh. <sighs> Could go with Anax Shadow Spear and wait on it for a little while. So at least we're getting something done with our turn. Hmm. I just don't know what answer we have to this card other than killing the creature that it that it's attached to. If it was just minus two, minus oh, there'd be no issue here at all. And it's things like that that really make me want to. Um, keep this flame spill on me. Because that can't be allowed to live. Yeah. Card advantage with Nessian Champion. Absolutely not. And yeah, let's just... Let's get in for three. Major oof kind of situation here. Questing beast. Okay. So that'll be getting in. We can't really block with it. It's just a nice, valued creature. 
Bone Crushy. Ah, I'm, re I'm regretting that counter as well. <laughs> that plus one plus one counter is the worst. Uh, well, I guess now we're equipping. So we can offer a trade with Questing Beast if we really want to. Uh, let's go in with Crater Maker so we get that extra devotion. And send five points of Trampling Lifelink. Yeah, we're going to have to fight on a different axis, I think. The one upside of Krenko being in the situation that he's in is that our opponent can't really attack with anything big enough that Krenko can block because it'll just bring him back then. Eutropia, yeah. But with all that being said, our opponent does have a commander that says gain lifelink, uh, flying, sorry. I'm going to kill Eutropian now. Rather than later. And then, because these guys can't block, I'm going to be getting in with all my 1-1s. One I'm getting with the Crater Maker, so that's not a good block. Send everything but Krenko. And then they can start eating some tokens if they like. I just need to put that pressure on, I think. Send her up on a 12, put us on 29. Shadow Spear is doing some serious work. They're hovering it so much like they have answers to it. I feel like this is just Eutropia Go, though. Well, it's enough mana to do Eutropia plus something. Kiora best of sea gods. Oh, no. Now, that is pretty grim. Pretty grim indeed. Hmm. Tap all permanents and then they'll get to gain control of one at a later date. What would I want them to have? They're probably going to take like Shadow Spear, I guess, for their 8-8. Eight -eight. And that'll win them the game. So I have to race. What's the best way of racing? If we had lands, we'd play two three drops this turn. Uh, I guess we're going with the war boss. The mentor means that the countered up creatures uh, will give us... A little bit of Ozolith power, which may or may not be a good thing based on what our opponent will end up doing here. So we're going to do this. I mean, they're all going to get tapped anyway, so... Let's power through. Opponent gets a nice double free block there. Take them to nine. And I might as well use the rest of my mana to equip. I can remove the hexproof on the token, but eight power eight toughness is just too much anyway. Uh we'll slap this on Krenko. <laughs> doesn't it doesn't matter. Tap all non land permanents, yep. And they don't untap. Hmm. There's Eutropia. And then do we have a three mana enchantment? We got Primal Empathy. Yeah. So they get a land, they get to put a counter on a thing and give it flying. And get in for ten. Oh, we got the land. Okay. Phoenix of Ash is four points in the air. I don't really need the lifelink, so I think that's what I'm going to go and do. We may just have this with Castle Emberth. Do I want to play Bone Crusher Giant? I don't know if Bone Crusher Giant really moves the needle at all. 
as opposed to the extra four points on Phoenix of Ash, which I think definitely has the potential. Let's pass, see if they block. Yeah, they do. So they understand that I have zero cards in my hand. <laughs> okay. So they draw a card because they've got a creature with the greatest power. They get to take control of a permanent. It's got to be Shadow Spear. Yeah. Shadow Spear and then equip it to the Kraken token. Yeah, so they gain 9 life. Yeah, okay, so if I don't win next turn, I don't win at all. Hmm. Nissa who shakes the world is an extra 3 points of damage, as well as a vigilant creature. I'm gonna do it on the island. Take some big hits here. And they go to 14. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we can ever really put enough out on the battlefield. Maybe... Oh my god. I was going to say, maybe uh, Ember Cleave on Phoenix of Ash might do something since we get to pump it. But I think that seals the deal. I think that is officially us dead, especially if we're just drawing another land. Okay. Activate Cryptic Caves. See if there's anything good. Chandra, Fire Artisan. Yeah, we're just done. We are just done. We'll swing and then we'll we'll go to the next game. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can have a counter. Everything gets plus one, plus O. Oh. And then, what does that leave our opponent on? Let's find out. So close! Oh! If they hadn't have answered Phoenix of Ash, I think we might have had it. I don't know. We wouldn't have had to crack the cryptic cave, so we'd have had an extra extra mana. This is three, actually, isn't it? Oh, never mind. What an interesting game that ended up being very not interesting. Thanks, Agent of Treachery. Moving on. Okay, we're in, and this sounds fine, although this matchup very much will probably not be. We're up against Kaikar Winds Fury. This is going to be a non-game in a nutshell. Uh, Jeskai, 3-3 three, three Flyer. Uh, basically, any non-creature they cast makes a 1-1 one, one Spirit. So not only is that an annoying blocker, but this usually means control, which usually means answers to my Krenko at instant speed so that we don't get to play. I imagine that's exactly how this is going to go, but we're going to play it out. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'll just shock our opponent in the face, I guess. Eh. No, I won't. I'll swing. I'll hold it until their turn, just in case they play something that Krenko might not want to push through. Then I've got that two damage burn spell. Could do an end step as well, just to maybe um, get a counter out of them, but I had I doubt it. Please be the Flyers version, which is considerably less degenerate. Judging by the delay here on a turn three play with blue mana, I'm guessing. Oh, it could be the Flyers version. <gasps> Ooh, exciting! All right, killed Urban. That's better value than two to the face. All right, ooh, the Ozolith as well is very good, but we're not gonna have time to use it. Krenko comes in. Uh, I think I need to just get Krenko out of shock range. We'll swing, make two goblins. 
Next turn we can start pumping Krenko with the Rim Knight, get the Ozolith down maybe so that we can keep our counters if he dies. We'll see. We shall see. Yes, Kaikar tap down. That's really, honestly, the best possible situation that we could find ourselves in. So, let's pump Krenko. Play the Ozolith. Play Shadow Spear. And then I think we're pumping with Rimrock Knight. So we'll get in. I think I'll save the pump for now. So we could just get clarion or something like that. So the extra creatures won't make too much of a difference. Hmm. Alright, so really, really good spot to be in. If they do have Clarion, they are going to have to lose their own Kaikar, most likely. Unless they've got some sort of bounce effect. God, I'm so glad that this is the Flyers version. Lava Coil. Oof. Alright. Exactly enough to kill Krenko to the command zone with ye. We do put the counters on the Ozolith, though. So, all of our work is not in vain. We get to go Dwarven Mine next turn, make a Dwarf, swing with all of our creatures, and then play Krenko and put those counters back on him. We could wait a turn as well, so we've got the maximized velocity. That's a consideration for sure. Yeah, opponent's uh, old and open counter magic, so we're not going to go for Krenko. I want him to be affordable. Castle Embereth. Okay, so looks to me like Bone Crusher Giants gonna be huge massive. As uh, Dwarven Mine, they call it a mine. Let's play Bone Crusher Giant. I think we could actually equip Bone Crusher Giant. Should we just do that? That seems okay. Then again, if I equip a goblin token, I'm going to be swinging in with them. But Bone Crusher Giant gets out of Clarion range, if they have that. Gets out of like 3 damage burn spell range as well. Yeah, I think so. be on the safe side, we'll do that. I think he's dead. Something's dead. Maybe this is a bounce spell. Brazen Borrower. Okay, well, we're going to put the counters on a goblin token. Does mean that if our opponent doesn't block that 3-3, three, three, which I'm guessing they probably won't, then we can't just immediately put them on Krenko, but I don't think that's the end of the world. I think the pressure is just good enough for me. Let's see what they want to do. Looks like Brazen Borrower. Yep. Make a spirit, bounce the Shadow Spear. Okay. I'm just going to replay that. Maybe that's what they want. I was hoping to go Krenko Maximize Velocity. That might not be an option though. But then again, do I really care with a board state that looks currently like this? We'll see. Ooh, they might be sacking spirits here for maybe Electro Dominance? Two mana. I don't know what they're ramping into. 
Shark Typhoon would be uh, on mana. It'd leave them tapped out, though. Which could potentially lead to a blowout. And a blowout that I think I'm just too wide, really, for them to come back from. Time Wipe! Okay, with floating mana, because, you know, Time Wipe's an expensive card and all that. So the floated two. So we're, we are going to get our Krenko down, and our Ozolith is going to get those counters back. So we're going to make a big Krenko. So two plus one plus one counters on the Ozolith. When its floating mana goes away. And we go Embereth. We go Krenko. We need to not see unsummon based effects, I suppose. Uh, this is sorcery speed, so we kind of have to go for it now. Give haste. Plus one, plus one. Combat. Ozolith does its thing. And swing mate five goblins. Completely undo that board wipe. And set up a situation where we probably win next turn if they don't have another. Good game. Sweet. Alright. So if they had tapped correctly they would have had three blue mana and i'm guessing that means that I, I feel like the double blue that they held up and earlier was gonna be a counter magic because even though they ended up going with brazen borrower that's only one blue so it doesn't really make sense for them to shock in the hollowed fountain i think they did have like a sinister sabotage or an absorb or something like that uh the way that that tapped though um i'm not sure how that went down to be honest they floated to red and then it basically just tapped all their mana it was a weird one i don't understand specifically how that happened because you got the double red from your spirits white white blue and then you should have like blue white left open i don't know i don't know it's a weird one but uh yeah, i'll take it Alrighty then, we're in, and on the draw, which is the worst possible opportunity for us to be in, uh, this hand is also the worst possible hand we could have, so we're just going to throw that back, and yeah, unfortunately we're going to take this. <laughs> it's a hand, I'll give it that. Alright, so our opponent's playing Vivian, Monster's Advocate, strictly worse Nissa who ruins the game, 5 mana, uh... Three loyalty. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top card, top of your library. And then you get to tick up and make a million three threes. The minus allows you to basically neoform. Our opponent with a destiny spinner that I can't interact with is unfortunate. I don't think it necessarily matters too much that it is there, but still pretty annoying. Lotus Field, get rid of their mana. Interesting. Alright, I think I'm just gonna kill the Arachnia here. Reason being that I want few as few blockers as possible in front of Krenko when the time comes. So, down comes Krenko. I don't suspect our opponent will have fight spells, but... I guess it's a possibility. It's basically green's only real way of interacting with us. And they get in for two. So I need to be able to push through... Four points of damage. We do have a plus one plus O. Oh, so that's three. We actually have enough to kill Corvo here on the attack. Uh, but we would have to sacrifice essentially uh, one goblin creation. I think that's fine though. We have the heart fire as well. So I'm going to give plus two plus O oh here to Krenko. And then I think because I want to offer... The potential for a block. We're not going to take that fifth goblin. And instead, we're going to do this. Put a first strike counter on it. I think that just works out better. And pass the turn. So we've got one counter and one first strike counter that can go onto the Ozolith. And our opponent realizes that they cannot race this. Yeah, outside of fight spells, I don't really see them doing too much there. And we can heart fire in response to... 
kill pretty much anything that they play there. Uh, I'm guessing they missed their land drop, because I would have probably played it out a little bit longer. Opponent seems to disagree, though. Uh, but yeah, that's a really good position to be in very early on in the game, and that's what we're looking for. Alright guys, well that is going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe as well for some more Brawl content in the future. If you hit that little bell icon as well right next to the sub subscription button, that'll give you notifications when I release new videos. Because if you don't do that, YouTube won't help you. But yeah, thank you very much for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.